Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to talk to you for a minute about this, um, uh, what are they calling it? COVID. It's supposed to be code for you know what, that flu thing from China. It's supposed to be a global pandemic. Okay. I keep getting five, six, seven videos in my email every day about this. And this this particular one, I watched it. Uh, wasn't all that long. And it's by, let me tell you the channel, Full Spectrum Survival. Alright, he's got it titled, Government Warning, USA is not ready for what is coming. The United States government is preparing the military to lock down regions of the United States if this spread cannot be contained. Disease researchers and physicians are warning that we do not have enough ICU beds to accommodate for an outbreak this severe. And this sentence doesn't make sense, but I think they're trying to say, do what you can do in order to prepare yourself and your family for what is coming. Today we are reading from a rapid advice guideline on the National Institute of Health government website. Okay, then he goes on to talk about these things they sell um, if you join, you go to www.patreon.com slash full spectrum dot 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 something. It says you'll get waterproof physical survival cards sent to you in the mail every single month. I guess that means that as things get updated. At the $10 level. Exclusive content and so much more. Okay. That's what his district description box says. Okay, this was put out today. February, it is February 16th, right? Yeah, Sunday, February 16th. Right now it's 8.56 p.m. And uh, he's reading from this government document. How do I put this? Okay. When I was talking to the Lord about this earlier and yesterday, see, I've been trying to put together this video and I said, you know, Lord, it, it almost sounds like we're at the fourth seal already. And I didn't get a direct message like I have in the past, but I felt like he was, it just was downloaded into my spirit that this is not of him, this is of Satan, okay? In other words, it isn't that it isn't happening, it's just that it's not a judgment from him yet. It's not one of the seals. Okay, we know that Satan's a... Uh, there's not even... Like, there's no word to describe the awesomeness of God. There's no word to describe the evilness of Satan and what he's up to and his counterfeiting. Okay, because see, I was like... Lord, I don't even want to make this video 
because I, I, I don't even know that I can, and I kind of stopped myself, and I heard him remind me when I, this scripture came to my brain. When I come, will I find faith on the earth? And I was like, of course, Lord, you will find faith. I'm not doubting you. I'm not doubting him. I'm not doubting his word. I'm confused. I was temporarily confused. Uh, or at least maybe confused is not the right word. More like not scared because we already got, somebody got the message from him where he said our preventative for this illness is Psalm 91. It takes your faith and belief that a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand may fall at your right hand, but it will not come upon you. You will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Now look at China. The persons, I watched a video several days ago where two women, I'm pretty sure it was two women, took that virus out of Canada and took it back to China, to Wuhan, Wuhan, whatever the city is, where it is, where it originated from. And they did turned it into a bioweapon, even got a patent number on it. That's happened before. Right here in the United States from Operation Paperclip when they brought those Nazi, uh, Nazi scientists and a Japanese doctor scientist over here. And the two of them together at Fort Detrick came up with uh, a bioweapon called Mycoplasma Fermentans, which was weaponized and destroyed. Distributed it all across Canada and the United States to destroy our immune systems. So when things happened, we wouldn't be able to fight them so well. That's why there's so many autoimmune diseases right now. Our bodies are attacking themselves. And the, all of the stuff they're doing, I am sure the chemtrails are playing a part. They are not for global warming. I mentioned them to somebody the other day. Look at them chemtrails they're putting up. Oh yeah, that's because that's so uh, the earth won't be so hot. So apparently they heard that on the news or from somebody. I said that isn't all they're for, and I just dropped it. I said I'm just tired of arguing with people that don't know. What's the point of it? They can't do anything about it. And if they don't know the Lord, they're just going to worry about it. So the point is, this is not the fourth seal, which tells me it is going to die out. It is not going to kill a third of the third of the world. This guy's making it sound like all, all these millions of people are in quarantine. Well, that they may be, but I'll, I'll just bet you that not that many people end up dying from it. Now, maybe in China they have been there again. Who's their God? Either they have there, now there are Christians over there that surpass the Christianity of this country. They go underground and they pray and sing and get hurt, hear sermons all day long and don't have air conditioning or heat if it's cold and they don't even care. 
Here, people go to church, and if their seat's not comfortable, they can't take it for an hour. It's just pathetic, because they don't know Jesus the way these people do. But if you're not one of them, if you are not one of them, you're very susceptible to getting this illness and dying from it. Because they worship either no God at all or some strange God. Buddha, maybe. I don't know. Buddha, I haven't looked into it. The point is, it's basically communistic and they don't allow Christianity over there like, well, there's other countries that are the same way. But anyway, I'm saying... In my honest opinion, that's why it's happening and God's allowing it. And maybe it coming to different countries will get people repenting. What I do know is the Word of God says, and I've talked about this before, in Psalm 2, let me pull it up so I'll say it right. Because this is such a, it just keeps me calm to know. I mean, we need to know these things. We need to know Psalm 91 and say it a lot. If not every night, five times a week. I mean, or any time you start to fear or wonder, oh, Gosh, now the United States is saying we don't even have enough beds for the flu, much less this. And, oh my gosh, Lord, what is going on? And I was leaning that way. Okay, I'm admitting it. And and the Lord helped me snap, uh, what's the expression, nip that in the bud. Okay, here's Psalm 2. Listen to this. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. That's God. The Lord shall have them in derision. This is King James Version. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, S-O-N, capital S-O-N. That's Christ, Jesus, the, Lord, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry. And ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. You keep your trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 
verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Now, this video that I just watched, what, what I started to say earlier, I don't trust the NIH as far as I can throw them. But I can't see them making this out to be more than what it is. But could they be? So that, and he mentions Bill Gates, who's that, he, he's all up into making vaccinations. And then there was, there was another video talking about, oh, the vaccine will have the mark of the beast in it. Well, I don't believe that. The mark of the beast is going to be a little glass cylinder not quite the size of a grain of rice, or may maybe a little bigger, actually. But it'll fit into a hypodermic. That looks painful to have that put in there. Doesn't look like they numb it a bit from the ones I've watched, the videos. Anyway, they just inject it in there, put a Band-Aid on it, and there you go. All your information is in your hand. That is not a vaccination. But I don't know what's coming down the pike. I, I mean, what I'm trying to say is don't let yourself get fearful, okay? Um, let me pull that up. Let me pull that up. There is a verse that says, The unbelieving, the fearful, uh, okay, I knew it was Revelation 21 verse 8, here's the King James Version, but the fearful and unbelieving in other words, you don't believe the scripture or you don't believe in Jesus at all. I guess it could be either. And the abominable and the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters. Oh, they don't say the whole thing. Let me click on it. Whoremongers, sorcerers, and idolaters. We talked about that the other day. Idolatry. Get rid of anything that's considered an idol. And all liars shall have their part. Those are all saved people. Except for the one that says, and unbelieving. shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And I sure hope that means that when you get thrown in that lake, you die. So don't be fearful. Not because of this. It is wrong to fear. There are scriptures on that. You could do your own little Bible study on scriptures on fear. And you can pull up a list of them and look them up. You can trust your God. I know you all know it. Make sure it's in here and in here. Believe it. Know it. The word of God is true. 
and it says, I am convinced the first rapture has to take place before the Antichrist is revealed to the world as a world leader. He won't be revealed as the Antichrist. Only Christians will know and realize that, the ones that are left behind, when he's revealed. I know in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, when it's talking about the apostasy must come first before he is revealed, it's got to be that, that that word apostasy means more than a falling away from the faith. That's been going on. It means to be taken away or to recede or to, uh, what was that word? Uh, defect. Defection. We defect. Yeah, Jesus is going to help us suck us right up out of here is what he's going to do. And you can believe it. The ones who are ready. Those that Luke 21, 36 is talking about. Pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man. So, we're in a... Uh, like a not the great tribulation but we're in tribulation that's clear it's not just this plague there's been waters turning to red have y'all seen that oh my gosh that looked just like blood running in that icy water and then the water beyond it was red reddish that dark Almost brownish red. It looks like blood. It's been there for a few minutes or so. It turns a darker color. That's what it looked like. I forget where that was. Was that in China? Anyway, I didn't share the video, but that was something. And then all this weather warfare, they're creating it. Spray. We had all those chemtrails all all day long. They were spraying, and then we get all this heavy rain for two days straight. We got all this heavy rain. There was flooding in some areas of Birmingham. I tell you, and it's going on all over the world, and it's not God doing it. It's Satan doing it. He's trying to kill as many people as he can. Because he knows his time is short. Because once once God takes out, lets Jesus take his bride, and those who get to go with the bride, the bride of Christ is the first fruits. Once we're gone, all hell will break loose. Like I... I don't guess you could say literally because hell is going to be a torment like you can't imagine any more than we can imagine how wonderful heaven's going to be. Unless you watch some of these NDE stories. That sounds pretty bad to me. Anyway, I'd, I didn't mean to go on so much. I mainly wanted to remind you, just remind you, that things are happening all over the world. We've got the earthquakes. We've got the volcanoes. But the Lord is protecting his own. I would love to hear a report from these people in China that love the Lord so much that they praise and worship him and hear sermons about him all day long. And don't get tired and don't want to quit. And it's just, to me, that is beyond my imagination to be able to love him that much. 
I would just bet all the money I had to know they don't, they aren't getting sick. Or if they are, they're just getting over it like, like a mild case of the flu. We don't need to be afraid. We need to keep trying to just do what we can to save others. Try to spread the word somehow, some way. Pray. Let us stay in prayer as much as we can for the lost people. I think they have more of a chance right now than the lukewarm. Because Jesus said, if you are lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Or spew you out, whichever version. You know, some might say spit you out. Either way, he's rejecting you. Because you, you've had the chance. You heard about the gospel truth. And yet, you want to live a life of sin because, oh, nobody's perfect. Oh, that just makes me want to scream. Nobody's perfect. No, but we're supposed to try to be, Jesus said, be perfect even as your heavenly Father is perfect. We are to try. We have to try. And when you mess up and you don't make it, which he knew we wouldn't, you repent or ask forgiveness. You ask forgiveness. And that is not trampling on the blood of Jesus. People need to quit saying that. That's a lie from the devil. That is doing what Jesus said to do. He taught us the Lord's Prayer. And in it, it says, And forgive me, Lord, for my sins. And I will forgive those who have sinned against me. Look it up. It says that if you don't know the Lord's Prayer, you should. That's another good one to say every day. Put your armor on and don't take it off. Just plead the blood of Jesus over all the pieces of it. Take up your shield of faith so you can extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy. Take up your sword, which is the very word of God. Quick to divide the lies from the truth like bone from marrow. We have to know the lies from the truth so we can divide, rightly divide the word. Not believe these few handful of scriptures that he who calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. I believe that's a deathbed confession there. and Or you call upon the name of the Lord, you're saved, and then you walk the straight and narrow. You put the flesh to death daily. You stop sinning. And when you mess up, you repent and ask forgiveness and do the commandments Jesus taught and stop trying to get out of it. That's what once saved, always saved people are trying to do and they don't even realize it. I think they don't even realize it. It's easy believism. And, and then they are taught, they're taught in the seminaries that they go to that somehow, if you don't believe that, you're trampling on the blood of the Lamb. Ay, 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 it's just the opposite. Anyway, I'm going to end it there. So I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus Christ over this video and over my computer and myself and over each and every one of you your devices, and all your internet connections so we can stay connected until we're out of here. Don't be afraid. Live with confidence with your armor on. Having the word of God in your hand, so to speak, it's spiritual, but you imagine it. 
keep it on. We don't ever take it off. You just plead the blood of Jesus over it. And remember, it says, and pray in the Spirit at all times with all manners of prayers and petitions and for all the saints. Well, of course, that doesn't mean every minute of every day you're People would think you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you can't go to work doing that. But And do not call it mumbo-jumbo. Do you realize that's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? It is in the Word of God. Read the book of Acts for anybody that doesn't believe it. And I know the difference between prophesying in tongues, which requires a person who can stand up and interpret it, in the known language of the group versus the personal gift. And I know a lot of you don't have it yet. I'm saying you should want to and you should be asking and fasting and praying for it until you get it. What it is is you, you ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't just ask for that gift. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you just start saying something that doesn't make sense to you. That's why a lot of people call it mumbo-jumbo or gibberish, because it doesn't make sense to them. Okay, I've gotten off into another... That's a whole other study. But it is part of our armor. So you really can't deny it. All you can do is ask for it. Alright. So I've pleaded the blood. I'm going to say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.